All right, all right, all right. We are live. I have Tammy Pack Jordan. This is so exciting, man. I am super excited to have you. I am super excited to be here. This is going to be awesome. Yeah, so uh, you and I were talking just a little bit uh, before we started the show here, and um, I was getting a little bit of your background, but let's do this. Let's let's dive right into um, how long have you been doing real estate now? I've had my license since I believe it was 09, but I mostly was just doing it for myself at that time. Um, I always laugh and say I had a realtor that was a sweetheart, but, you know, kept messing up deals for me. And so I, it's kind of like having a hairdresser you can't get away from because you don't hurt their feelings. So I had to get my license just so I didn't have to deal with him anymore. I would go work my own deals and say, here, just, just don't mess it up. Just don't make anyone mad. Don't help me out. Just do the deal. So I've done it myself for, you know, nine, 10 years, something in that range. Um, but as far as having the company, we started in 2015. My uh, husband, Wes, and I did. So not very long, three years. That's amazing. And, and, yeah. and I want to dive into that because like you have some just, I mean, astounding statistics to share. So when you decided to get into the real estate business in 2009, um, what, what did you kind of, is this something you knew you wanted to do? I mean, you talked a little bit, if we rewind, if we rewind just a little bit, I know that you were in, you told me you were looking for, you know, a retail position when you moved into the Fredericksburg area. So how did you go from like retail to, you know what, I think I'm going to get my real estate license. Like, was that, was that, was it just the, the, the realtor that kind of drove you crazy that drove you to do that? Or was it like, if, if this guy, if, if this looks so easy that I can, I, if I just get my license, I know I can make money doing it. Well, it was, you know, kind of an interesting progression because I went to UT law school at the university of Texas where I come from and practiced for five years. And then some of my family had retail little shops, quilt, home decor, decorative accessories. So I opened a, a, a retail store at one point had six retail stores here in Fredericksburg. And we live in the cutest little tourist town. We get a million and a half to two million tourists a year in a town of 10,000 people. So that's why we moved here and chose Fredericksburg because we knew kind of that model from watching our family do it. Mm -hmm. I always loved real estate. So the first thing I did to get into real estate, um, Fredericksburg is not the kind of town typically, it's more like California prices when you think about the kind of town where you really can't afford to buy a house usually and, and long-term rent it mm -hmm. because they're so expensive um, and people can't, can't pay the rent. But what you can do here is short-term rental, uh, B and B Airbnb type situation, vacation rental. So we got into that pretty early on <clears throat> and 2001 opened my first B and B cottage still had the retail stores going as the full-time sure. job. I uh, got up to 26 rooms at one point of B and B cottages. Wow. Then in 2007, opened Absolute Charm B&B Reservation Service. So like, like we are the VRBO or Airbnb for our little pocket, our little town here. And we represent over 200 properties over there that we manage for them. So what would happen is I had my license for myself and then I knew I could use it to buy and sell the little vacation rental properties that I wanted personally, kind of flipping them situation. And then having the service, we would have both homeowners ask us about selling their property. And we also had a lot of people stop in that stayed with us and say, boy, I'd love to have a little cottage like this myself sometime. So we knew there was a market there. The third thing we had was all the other realtors in town sending people to us to tell them what a great property, B&B &B property, this little cottage they were trying to sell was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not their fault because you can't know everything. It was just something that we happened to have so much expertise in because it's what we did for a living. So we wouldn't be like your typical realtor be like, Oh, I'm sure it's a really good property. It's going to do real good. You know, we could say no, an average one bedroom, one bath with no shared walls with a private hot tub is going to average this based on our database. So realtors love to send people here, which, which was great because there's always the theory that maybe they'll sign on with us and we'll represent them as a B and B service, right. uh, which happens sometimes, sometimes it didn't, but it got to the point where my employees on that side were saying, you know, I spend a half a day to a full day, probably a week helping realtors in this town sell B&Bs. And I hear I have my license for years. But mm -hmm. the truth is I had all the jobs I could take at that point. But then I met and married my new husband, Wes Pack. And we met in 2014, got married in 2015. And he lived 100 miles away in Georgetown, Texas. And he was trying to convince me how great Georgetown is. And it is good, by the way. It's a suburb kind of area of Austin. But I had two kids who hadn't finished high school yet and owned uh, the B&B 
proper, you know, the cottages, a couple of cottages myself, as well as the service and the retail stores, I was really in no position to be really leaving. So I wanted to kind of just gradually show him the light of how great Fredericksburg uh, is. And turns yeah. out he was selling custom homes uh, in Georgetown is what he was doing. He had even taken the entire real estate course, just never bothered with his test. So all he had to do was get that and we were ready to be in business. So you are, I mean, <laughs> What I what I'm hearing you say is that you I mean you're an entrepreneur by trade I mean you, that's the way it's in your blood right I mean you DNA. knew that yeah so you you knew that when you moved uh, to Fredericksburg that you you had a vision right and it was to open your own retail store and so you were ultimately going to do something uh, as an entrepreneur no matter what right you're not it's it sounds to me like you're not the type of person that's going to go in and work you know in a cubicle for the rest of your life. Well, you know, I, I thought I would. Um, I went to law school, which wasn't a huge decision because I was always kind of a nerdy brainiac person. So I finished high school a year early and college a year early. Well, law school is only three years. So my, my calculation, that meant law school really only cost me one year. So I was able to be out of law school, barely 23 years old um, and looked about 12. So I knew I had to work for somebody because, <laughs> you know, I, I looked like a kid. So I was lucky to find a good position and spend some years doing that. <clears throat> it was really that process that made me realize I wanted to work for myself. And, and I did not. What, what bothered me is I looked at the senior partners who were ahead of me that I should be aspiring to be. Right. Mm -hmm. And they were working more hours <clears throat> than I was. They didn't have a lot of free time. Now, don't get me wrong. I've always been a hard worker. And I learned as soon as I went into business that I've never worked so many hours in my life. But it was what I wanted to be doing when I wanted to be doing it. And it was for me and building my brand. So it was completely different. Who is it? Is it uh, I want to say it's Lori Grenier, I believe, on Shark Tank, who said an entrepreneur is someone who will work 80 hours a week so that they don't have to work 40 hours a week. And that's pretty much I believe the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I that's love how it. it worked out. So you get into retail and, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's so funny, you know, we all have this, this, this crazy journey and, and, you know, you get over there and, and by the way, like, so I got to go back to something real quick because, sure. you know, you moved there, you were on your own. Were you on your own when you moved there? I was not. I was married to the father of my daughters, a okay. great guy. And so we kind of built this together. He, I, I took the leap off and, of the cliff and he was gracious enough to go along and, and support it and think we could make it work. And so we did. And like I said, at one point had six stores and were in retail until 20, until 2015, until we started okay. re, uh, the, re, uh, the real estate side. And at that point I realized, I said, even with my newest and West, I said, we cannot do B and B cottages, B and B reservations, retail, which is a big job and real estate to the level we want to do it. So yeah, that's what yeah. had to go at that point. Yeah. There's no way. I mean, I, I just know that from experience. Okay. So, you meet Wes and then you guys, I mean, you, here's, here's the, I'm going to, I'm going to ask a question to set this up before we go into uh, the next segment here. But so tell everybody, tell everybody what your production is. Tell you so you, I know that you started in 2015, right? And so walk through the progressions of the last three years, three and a half years. Yeah. So the funny thing is we just passed the three year anniversary of our very first closing because our first thing to close was in November of 2015. So that year, I think we did about 3.6 million. Um, we had three deals in 2015, two of which were ours. We bought something and sold something. <laughs> so we had one client based deal and it was the smallest of the three, I think. <laughs> so then the next year, I don't remember the exact number, um, maybe in the 15 million range, 13, 15, 20 million, we started building our team. We had a few people start to add with us. We got a little momentum going. Mm -hmm. So that was 2016, 2017, I believe we did 42 to 44 million, something in that range. And with basically the exact same size team this year, we are on track to do close to 100 million with our team of 13. Wow. Mike, 95 dropped. on the low end. Yeah. Holy million cow, million. man. So there's so much to unpack there. So what I want to do is I want to rewind just a little bit. Um, how did it work? Like, did, when, when Wes came over and he joined you in Fredericksburg, did, did you guys, was that, was that, were, were you guys like all in, we're going to build this real estate thing? Or was this something that happened like after he moved over here? <clears throat> no, he, we were all in from the moment we decided this was going to be our job. We were going to okay. live in Fredericksburg and build it because he was, let's see, 
he was 50 when we got married and I was 47. So our theory was, you know, I said, real estate comes and goes, it's ups and downs. And when the next cycle of or slowdown hits, we can't be number 17. We got to be number one by then or number two or three worst case. We've got to be in that top three because there's always something selling, right? It never goes to nothing, but we can't be a straggler. We can't be a part-time hobbyist. So we knew going in, um, one thing that really helped us, of course, is we had the B&B business. So we did have something else putting a roof over our heads, you know, and I, and I recognize that that was an advantage, but it was a hard, hard earned advantage with a lot of blood, sweat and tears over the years. Right. So we wanted to leverage and take everything we possibly could and just go all in in real estate. Because number one, from when we first started dating, we both realized we were big on the go big or go home. And it's like, I'm not here to piddle. If I'm going to put my name on it and the absolute charm name on it, and if you're going to put your name on it, um, we're going all in because we're going to own this thing. That's just how we that's how we like to roll. We're going to be number one. Yeah. Have you, uh, did you get a chance to listen to that? Um, there's a guy named Ed Milet and he's a, he's a motivational speaker out of, um, out of he's like Newport beach, um, orange County area. Yeah. He, he just did a podcast talking to the UOP baseball team. Um, and I don't know if you've heard that yet, no. but you, yeah, you got like, listen, I'll try, I'll try to, I'll, I'll, I'll make a note to send you the link. Awesome. And, uh, like you, will, you guys would love that. You should share that with Wes and your team. Like it is, it is so powerful, but let me go back to, um, let me go back to, to your production because I don't know if I've ever heard in my entire life somebody going from 3.6 million to almost a hundred million dollars in three years. So we got to like, I know people are dying to hear how in the hell did you do that? So it's 3.6 million, right? You guys are getting your feet wet. You're learning the ropes of real estate. Then you go to roughly 15, 18 million, something like that. Then you go to 40 something million. And now you're at a hundred million. So, Tammy, like, how in the hell did you do that? Well, if you want to go all the way back, our first person we brought on was probably the smartest thing we ever did. It's our uh, <clears throat> our sales manager, Catherine. She had experience of she'd been doing this about 10 years or so. Very smart, very methodical. We're like, we can sell anything to anybody, but I don't know how to fill out this paperwork. You know? <laughs> what do we got to put this in? What, what numbers going here? Give me some some sample contracts. Literally in the first year I was taking out because we'd bought and sold so much personally that I'd get those out and go, well, this is what that person always puts in, put that blank, that number goes there. And you know what it was, I was like, she, I always say she kept us out of jail. So yeah. she would look at everything and go, well, well, where are you going? What are you doing? What are you doing? But the, the, the honest truth of what we did is we went all in on the marketing end because mm -hmm. when it comes to listings where you got a list to last, right? Yep. And listings are all based on marketing. The one with the best marketing gets the listing. The one with the marketing wins. So we looked around at what was going on in our town and I said, there's a big quality gap here. Now, don't get me wrong. We've got some fine folks in this town who've done a great job and been hard workers and serve people to the best of their ability. But we would look at the marketing and think, man, there was literally a website I saw that looked like before the dawn of websites, it actually had a coupon you could clip out <laughs> on the homepage for closing calls coupon. I, oh, no I never way. Seen it. it was like three years ago. So we're like, okay, <clears throat> we got to take it up a notch. It has to be clean, crisp. The branding has to be beautiful. We, we started doing things for, we use social media, which to this day is our bread and butter. And the one thing that I would not give up was social okay. media because we would take a little and make it look like a lot. So, we, we were smart, I think, to use the word absolute charm because, yes, we were brand new in real estate, but in the small town, people knew of absolute charm B&B reservations. So they'd heard the name before. They'd seen the name, didn't feel quite as brand new. I'd been here a while, so I wasn't brand new to them. Sure. So we said, you've got to take a little and get that first listing here and the listing there and one there. You know, we have B&B owners out. Maybe you can sell my property. You know, you're selling your own. That's pretty good. So um, what we would do is we would really post, I would post West putting up the new listing sign and we went all out with beautiful signs, big, nice posts. We, we didn't spare expense on going all in. Okay. And uh, that made a huge difference. I would post, we finally would get one under contract. We'd post it again. I would post him mopping up those floors right for the walkthrough to make sure everything looked great. So I think what happens is people started to see our signs driving around town. Then they look on Facebook and they see our signs again. So, you know, you don't always remember where you saw, was that online? Is it the same property? Mm -hmm. Because I had people that first six months to a year when we hadn't done anything yet, really, we we're just starting going, man, y'all are killing it. I was like, yeah, we are, man, whoo, we can barely keep up. We are killing it. You know, because perception is reality. I was yeah. like, we had not closed a darn thing, but in their <laughs> minds, we were killing it. They were seeing our signs pop up and they were big and they were flashy and you could see them. 
And so you got to take what you got, especially when you're starting out. And if, especially if you're really starting out and you don't have a lot of money to spend, you got to take that one listing you ever get and you've got to do everything under the sun with it. You go yeah. take pictures. There's 16 different times, times a day. Once you're in the backyard, you're helping them weedy, whatever you got to do, but get, get the word out. Were you scared to do video? <clears throat> no, I don't really think I was scared to do video. I don't think you can be a trial lawyer and be scared scared to speak, you know, um, no. and honestly, that's the one and only thing I miss about being a trial lawyer is being in front of the jury and mm -hmm. having the opportunity to speak with people. Um, so no, I wasn't scared. Now I'm like everyone else. I'm always worried about, Oh, does my hair look good? It looks yeah. bad from this side, you know, I'm a chin. but I mean, the truth is, you know, uh, uh, I've heard it said many times in, in coaching circles, they'll say, you know what? I mean, you're worried about video because you don't like the way you look. Well, you look that way in real life. We can already see you. So we know what you look like. So, yeah. oh, that was such a freeing moment. Like, yeah, that is what I look like. So, so well, yeah, that know, has not been a struggle. Yeah, it, it, how do you, so you've got 13 team members and, and I, I assume that you encourage them to do video as well. How do you, how do you get them over their fear of video? You know, they're all at different stages and different levels. One of the things we're trying to do is really leverage our um, video producer that we have in house to do like market minute updates where we've written kind of a script for them. We've got a teleprompter they can use and all this stuff can be, again, it's on your iPhone or iPad. So it's mm -hmm. not as scary as it sounds. Um, and we're, we have them kind of step in, you know, do their bit and, re and repeat. The next guy comes in and does his, the next gal does hers. And we're really trying to amp that up even more as we're opening a, a recording studio behind our office where it can be kind of a simple thing set up all the time where you can come in, you can read off what we've written, and then you've got your own personalized market update that you can send out to your sphere who would rather hear it from you than me. Being that we're a fairly small town, sometimes the agents go, let's all just chip in and you read part of it and then joke around, elbow them out of the way and you get there and say part because they said, you know, it's a town of 10,000. We don't want to send the same video with different persons saying it yeah. to six different, to, to the same person. So that's one way we're getting around it. Some people so, are afraid of it. Some people are okay with it. Um, you know, I think it's just really encouraging them and doing it yourself. They can't say much to me because I do it myself. Yeah. I do a little, um, what has worked really well for me is I finally, I would make some videos and I'd be pretty pleased with them. They would just be live videos here in my pretty office and, and they would, you know, be great. And I would turn around. I don't know if you've ever had this happen and go, has it really been over 30 days since I've done anything? It just goes so fast. I, like, I swear I just made that video. So I said, okay, you're going to have to do something to, to lower the entry level, right? Make it simple, make it no fail. Mm -hmm. So what I started doing is I said, you know what? <clears throat> I've got to drive to work in the morning. And so why don't I do a little series called the drive, kind of a little pun there, you know, the drive to succeed, the drive yeah. in life and driving to work in a small town. It's about a five minute, I, I kind of stretch it out by going down to McDonald's the other end of town and getting an unsweet tea. And then I go to this one because to get more than seven minutes, I really got to drive all around town. Yeah. So, and my cats, uh, Princess Coco and Frankie are always riding with me and people get a kick out of that. That's not for show benefit. That's because they come to work with me every day and then they go home yeah. every day. And I've gotten really, really great traction from that. I have, um, 16 year olds who tell me they watch it. I've had 40 year olds and I've had 80 year olds tell me they watch it. Uh, so that has been a great thing because it didn't take any extra work, you know, and it puts the pressure on me to do it. I don't do it every single morning, but for the most part, if it's a normal time of day and I'm going to work, what's it going to add? Right. I pop it on there, hit go. And then we talk about whatever the issues of the day are. So you've yeah. got to do something that you will do and that you've committed to doing. Otherwise you're going to turn around and spend 30 days, 60 days, and you've done no video. Yeah. And guys, um, I would highly, highly recommend following Tammy on Facebook. She is a she's an awesome follow. She delivers a lot of value, especially to um, to consumers and real estate agents. Um, so um, yeah, follow her on Facebook for sure. Now, I want to I want to rewind just a little bit here before we move forward, because do you feel like that video has been do you, when you go from 3.6 million to 100 or almost 100 million dollars, it, it's it's almost like you've created this um, this influence, this credibility. This um, you're, I mean, you're a, you're literally you're you're a local star. I mean, right? People call you now. They're calling you because they see you everywhere. They see your video. So when you say you go on, you you went all in with marketing, are you are you talking that 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 maybe video was probably the most powerful thing you did? 
in the earliest of days, <clears throat> honestly, that's three years back. So it probably wasn't. It was the photos. Um, we, we kind of grow, have grown over the last year, year and a half into a lot more video. We did some, but the day in day out was the photos, the posting, something fun, something clever, something silly. We'd do contests. And I said, you know, the, the thing I tell people as a realtor, what everyone seems to miss is that the reason social media works for us is we're interesting. I yeah. mean, we've chosen to be interesting, you know, and that's not, uh, and that's not being flip. I think a lot of people want to go into this very stiff kind of talking way about their listing, you know, and it's great to talk about your listings, but it's got to be in a fun <laughs> way. You know, I, I let them into our, you know, so much of my, most of my support really is on my, my personal page, Tammy Jordan pack. And that's where people follow me because they see Wes and me going out to dinner. They see our marriage photos in Paris, which are all very glamorous and our, our beautiful children. We have five between us in their 20 to 28. They like following all of that. They like following Princess Coco, our cat. They like hearing about Frankie. People I've never met before will say, how's Frank? I know he got neutered last week. How's he doing? You can't believe the people that watch. So then you intertwine that with check out this new place we're going to sell. This is amazing. Y'all know anybody who's looking for a place? This is it. So you have to make it where people want to watch because nobody wants to watch about your business. One thing I did do in video that was hugely successful, I feel recently, I had some wonderful clients wanting to buy this particular home. Mm -hmm. So we go and look at it <clears throat> within an hour of us trying to start the contract up. It went under contract. So we missed out on that one. And they said, we really love that neighborhood. We sure wish we could have gotten that house. So I go to Facebook Live. I'm like, guys, I need your help. They want to buy in this neighborhood. They are standing ready with the check. Their house is about to be sold out from under them. We need a house in this neighborhood. Who do you know? Tag it, share it. Help me find a house. I am doing my job and I'm going to find them a house in this neighborhood. Wow. And so an agent, actually an agent in my office who had the other listing, but I don't think who was going to be thinking they were so in love with this neighborhood. She wasn't really going to reach out about anything extra, right? She lets the people know that have the house that had gone under contract because she knows that the parents two blocks over plan on selling in to three months. Yeah. So she reaches out. Those people reach out to me roundabout that house is under contract now never went on the market and we worked out a deal for them by using video. I mean, you've got to put it out there. And so number one, the fact we got the house that my clients wanted number two, people see that we're willing to be proactive and not sit back and go, well, I hope there's something pops up in Zillow tomorrow. Yeah. You know, I mean, nobody wants that. Nobody wants a lazy realtor. They want someone to, to pull out all the stops. And my client saw the live video and wrote and said, way to go. Love the hustle. Way to get out there and create a solution. Use video to do that. It's amazing, man. You are, you're, a, I'm telling you, man, you're a firecracker. Uh -huh. um, I, 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 I respect that. And um, I, is any of your competition trying to copy you yet? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All the so time, you, all the you, time. you raised the game there, didn't you? I mean, because when you when you said you entered the market there, like it was just kind of a, you know, it was just like a, it was just, it was, you know, Uncle Bob and Aunt Sue were selling real estate and, you know, whatever came, came and whatever went, went. And that's just the way it went. But you, I mean, you guys came in and you had a plan and you had a strategy and you guys executed it to the highest level. And that's why you're number one in your market now. And now and, you and are local do. celebrities. We feel, you know, really, honestly, really proud about that too, because I've in the last day and a half had other realtors in this town who are not with our team say, there's no way to compete with it. You're a class act. Um, and you have turned real estate on its ear in this town, you know, good for you, <clears throat> which always makes you feel good whenever they oh, you know, yeah. are respectful of that. Um, and sure they do copy it, but you know, and that's something my husband and I joke about some because he's a little more, normal, let's use that word, than, than I am. In other words, his, his, his thought would be like, oh, do we want people to know we're doing this? Or oh, we're I was like, marketing is not something you can really do in secret. Yeah. I hate to tell you, it's not, it's not going to happen. So if you're marketing, your people can already see it. It's out there or you're not marketing. Yeah. I, I can't hide it. So what I've always put out there, as I said, there are innovators and there are imitators. And the truth is, if, if, my thought is if someone's worrying about it, what I was doing 12, 18 months ago, my mind is already 18 months down the yep. road. That's where all my intent is. So let them have it. Um, <clears throat> I almost look back and think, do you have one original idea? Once I'd like to be able to copy you, just, just give me one unique idea. <laughs> it's yeah. not word for word what we did, but I do try to look at it as flattery and you know what? Hey, 
all's fair in love and real estate. So Absolutely. if it's out there, they can do what they want because my mind is always way down the road thinking, you know, it's so what I can't rest, rest on my laurels. There's no such thing. I better get more creative than ever before because now not only are we coming in here just early in, now we have a huge target on our back. Cause yeah. as you can imagine that, that shakes up the apple cart a little bit and people would, uh, there's a lot of people probably don't really care for us taking over some of those oh, positions. Yeah. I get uh, it. <laughs> I'm sure they don't. I'm sure they don't. Was so you were comfortable on video. You were a trial lawyer. And what about Wes? Did Wes ever had, have any reluctance to getting on camera? No, Wes actually before his home building days, he actually sold software for Corel. Um, and he would get on stage in front of a thousand people and be doing, he's a wonderful artist too. So he was demonstrating how to draw using Corel draw products. Yeah. So Wes is a ham hundred percent too. So he, he, he's very, very comfortable. We, we were a good fit in that way. Does video he likes have it. to be now He's a little more private. Once again, let's not forget. He's yeah. a little more normal. So in the day to day social media, he doesn't do as much. Does, does video have to be perfect? <clears throat> no. And you know, that's kind of an ongoing debate because there's the part of your brain that wants it to be the best you can produce for certain types of pieces, like our lifestyle pieces. We want them to be as good as we can make them. But there's a lot of evidence that people trust a lot more what comes off the iPhone. Mm -hmm. And so you, you got to know your platform. That's the number one thing that my daughter Savannah taught me when she came back from school and we started working in this. She goes, Mom, you got to know the difference between Facebook and Instagram. She goes, that post you did last night was hilarious for Facebook, but Instagram is an architectural digest magazine over there. That's not going to work and translate the same. So there are places and times where you can be casual and flip phone or your flip phone, not people even exist. iPhone is going to work just great, maybe preferable. And then there, of course, there are venues where it's really nice when you can do a nice edited film. So yeah. don't let it slow you down because if I could probably, pick one or the other, I would pick the iPhone if I could only have one, because I think you're going to get more reach and more believability. And you know, that's one of the things that I think Instagram was very, very smart. She made this point to me that, you know, you have to have your one beautiful, perfect photo. Whereas in Facebook, you can throw whatever up there. Yeah. Well, so Instagram realizes that that's why they came out with stories because stories go away and they're intended for you to have a little bit of freedom. You know, to be so perfect. You can relax a little and you can post some fun things. So that's their answer to uh, having to be too perfect. So that shows even they recognize that perfect only has its place, but candid, real, vulnerable day to day, fun, funny, silly is really where it's at. Gotcha. Gotcha, man. This just, this is, this is so valuable. And I, and I hope like everybody is taking notes on this because like, I mean, I, like I told you before we came on air that we are preaching video right now. Um, there is, there is a, there's a hole in the marketplace right now because agents, most agents and, and, you know, obviously not you and Wes, but most agents are scared to get on video, right? They're, they're overcritical of how they look. They don't know what to say. And the reality is they do though. People, if you mess up on video, people love that stuff. They they're they're they just, do. yeah, they, you know, they, 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 they just love that stuff. So, I'm telling my team, like we're creating, you know, local pages on Facebook right now. And we're going to go out like you did and, and interview local business owners. We're going to get to know the community. We're going to really get entrenched in the community like you did. And like, I would highly recommend, can you see me? Yes. Can you still see me? Okay. My, my screen back up. But I'm going to highly recommend that you guys go out and visit her website. And uh, it is, is it, is it uh, absolute charm Is that it? It is. And I think we have a link on there to our videos, right? We have some. Okay. Yeah. It is an amazing website. I, I just love it. And you, you, you guys will get some great ideas. I'm not talking to, to your competition right now, but anyway, no. they, <laughs> they like, can see them too. It's fine. <laughs> you have just some amazing videos and I think that, you know, you're definitely delivering some value to the community there. If, if especially people who don't know the community and want to move into the community, I mean, if they want to know where to eat, if they want to know about local pet stores, uh, know local business owners, it is just really good stuff. Well, think about this. It had, an, it had a two part thing for us. Number one, yes, we're providing info about the community for people who live here, for people who want to move here. But number two, my husband, Wes, was new to the community and this gave him a great excuse to call any and all business owners in this town and take them to lunch. Yeah. He now yeah, has an entree. We're going to give some you some free publicity. Let's go. And, and he's naturally a person that's really good at doing that. 
So he, whenever he has time not selling real estate, uh, has more than a plate full of, of people to call and visit with. I will yeah. tell you about the, yes, people want to see you mess up or be silly or funny. I'm always trying to get the bloopers included in the videos. One of my favorite was from a year or two ago. And <laughs> Wes was sitting in this French bathtub and fully clothed this antique shop. Just He did the whole interview sitting in this bathtub. It was weird. But toward the end of it, he looked up at me and I looked back at, at our cameraman and I said, okay, back to you. And I just froze it. And Wes looked at me and goes, back to who? And I was like, I don't know. And that's literally the end of the video. It, it, chops, it chops right there. And it was just the greatest thing. I, I don't know. Was that, that was like the anchor woman coming out in you, wasn't it? It was. Back to you. Back to who? That's what makes it fun. If you take yourself too seriously, which is what I find realtors tend to do, it causes problems. Um, matter of fact, we have recently opened a, and anyone here is, is free to join if they'd like. We're doing a closed Facebook group where we're going to start putting some of these ideas and content for social media. It's called Social Media 2.0 for Realtors. So feel free to go over there and I'll be happy to add anyone that wants to watch and learn it because I have so many ideas and I can only implement so many. I'm always telling people there, there are ideas like someone out there should say, hey, I'm not a great cook, but I'm going to come up with five recipes that each have no more than five ingredients, cost five dollars and can be cooked in nearly five minutes. You know, mm -hmm. something like this. And for five days this week, Monday through Friday, I'm going to cook one. And we're going to test them and see if it's if it's a hit or a flop. Silly stuff like that. People will tune in and go crazy for. Yeah. Or you Gosh, could say, so I'm, you could say I'm a terrible cook. Please, guys, can you send in a recipe that even I can't screw up? I'm challenging you. And, you know, something that best one, I'm going to choose a winner for a $20 gift card. But this week, I want you to send me your best no fail recipe and I'm going to cook it. We're going to do it live and we're going to see, and I'll give you the taste test and the true results at the end. Gardening, weight loss journey, anything that's real and fun and gets a little intrigued. Now, suddenly when it's time for them to sell a house, you're on their mind because they see you all the time. It doesn't have to always be talking pure real estate. Invite them in. And as, as Jay, Kinder and some, you know, they say, become the digital mayor of your town. So is this all part of that? Like you knew about the whole digital president thing, that, that, that whole, that, I mean, that the book, I'm, I'm assuming you read Mike's Mike and, uh, um, oh gosh, what's the other guy? Uh, Jay. Woods, Woods, Woods Davis. Woods oh, Davis. Oh, Woods, yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, I'm embarrassed to say I have not yet read the whole book, um, but I, I listen to their podcast all the time. And no, it's totally what I was doing already. I didn't know there was something called a digital mayor. I just knew that uh, attention is the currency of 2018 going forward. So you have to be on people's mind. You have to be top of mind. You have to make them know that you're in real estate. That seemed pretty obvious to me. Yeah. So I'm going, if they don't know, where am I going to get my first, my start from? You know, I, I can yeah. put the word out and uh, everyone can do the same thing. And you, you know, some people it's going to take you a little longer to build it up, but you absolutely can do this because the good news, 99% of the people are scared too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so, so true. I'm so glad you said that. So let, let's, let's talk about this. I mean, are, do you have, do you guys have any other lead sources other than, than your marketing that you're doing? I mean, are, are you guys paying for Zillow? Are you doing all that stuff? Are you, do you have lead generation platforms and all that stuff? We have like Boomtown with the squeeze pages um, okay. and we have done Zillow in the past and we still do a little bit of it and a little bit of realtor.com, but our marketing has taken off to the extent that here's what happens. Marketing gets you listings. Yeah. Listings make your phone ring with buyers. So you end up with both because of the marketing. Marketing rarely directly gets so much a buyer. Yeah. You know, in a small town, it, it does just because they know we're cool. We have client parties. You know, we yeah. donate a ton to the community. We go out and we take breakfast to all the teachers in town. And we and we don't we don't we don't market that in a way of going, look at us, we're so great. We market mm -hmm. that. Because I've had team members go, oh, well, I'm, make sure we're not going to be bragging about it. I said, that's kind of the definition of marketing. It's all in how you say it. <laughs> so what you, you know, you can't hide it under a bushel, not in this situation. You just can't get from the old church song. Uh, I said, you got to put it out there, but here's how you do it. You go show what you're doing. You say, guess what? Our teachers deserve this and better. They are stressed. They are stretched to the limit. I'm challenging all you other businesses in this community. Show us up. Outdo yeah. us. Get out there and do something bigger and better for our teachers because they deserve it. And that's they how do. you craft the message. Absolutely. And it's true. It's just honest. Right. But it's this is attention job. arbitrage. That, that's the world we live in. So you've got to do something to get your face out there. As far yeah. as lead sources, back to your question. Right now, over half of what we have in escrow 
is from desk duty, which means they are calling our phone number or they're walking in the door. We mm -hmm. literally had um, two properties that went under contract together. They were in the $8 million range for the two of them together. The buyer, we have the listing, Wes and I do, the buyer came in as a desk duty call because it was our listing. And so we have two of our buyer's agents here sharing uh, about an $8 million deal on the other side. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That right. That is just crazy. I mean, you guys are crushing it right now. I mean, that is just amazing. So, okay. So you got all this stuff going on. Like you guys are just growing at it at this amazing pace. And, you know, you hear about like this company EXP. Um, what were your initial thoughts? I never heard really anything about EXP because I always had my head down, my tail up, you know, working as my mom would say, <clears throat> until Kyle Whistle and Mary Maloney, who are my direct up line, uh, made the announcement they were switching. And I know Kyle and Mary very well. And we have a lot in common because we were all independent brokerages. We started from day one as our own independent brokerage. Mm -hmm. And we all had great marketing and branding. So I'm like, okay, what's going on here? Because if, if I have to lose my branding, I, I'm out. Like I would never consider something like this. Yeah, yeah. So I just started to talk to them about that. They're like, nope, you just have to, you know, maintain state law, of course, and, and abide by that. But mm -hmm. other than that, you get to brand yourself as you always did. So it started making a lot of sense to me at that point, because what we here's what really drew me to it. We want to grow. I mean, 100 million, 90 million. That's great. But that's really not where our sites are set. We want to be a lot bigger than that. We want to do a lot more deals than that. We're in a town of 10,000. There's only a few more agents we really would want to or could responsibly take on to our team in a town of that size. Right. So then you start looking at going to other towns. We thought we got to branch out to the big city. So we start looking at that and we're going, OK, so now we've got to rent a nice office space and we've got to hire people to work the front desk. It becomes financially almost prohibitive. Mm -hmm. So what we saw this as was a great vehicle to take our absolute charm team and branch out with that and take that to people. Because some people that come to me just want uh, to talk about EXP and I can do that all day long. Yeah. But I was finding a lot of them wanted to do EXP, but some of them also wanted to have some of the name Absolute Charm. Well, the great thing about EXP is it's so flexible. It actually provided a vehicle to do either. They were willing to work with us and say, well, let us give you platforms and ways that you can expand either direction. And that was hugely beneficial. Yeah, that is so powerful. Like when you when, because when you. Everybody, like I came over from KW, right? And, and right. like the whole, the big thing was like, you know, this, they were preaching this expansion thing, this expansion thing. And, and really what you were doing when you were doing expansion is you were racking up additional expenses that in most cases you couldn't hold accountable in another marketplace um, unless you'd done extensive research with, you know, as, as it relates to cost per lead and um, conversion rates and, 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 and things of that nature. So what you're saying is now within EXP, um, you don't need all that, right? You don't need all that anymore because like you can take, you can take what you're doing and you can, through expansion, you can duplicate that in any state. But what you're saying is that, you know, now you can do that. You don't necessarily have to be responsible for that individual agent, but you can right. help that individual agent grow through your tools, systems, and resources, right? Basically, that's exactly right because I'm thinking, We've got so many beautiful templates, so many ideas through social media, more than almost can be justified for a team of 13 people in a town of 10,000. I thought these are nationwide ideas. I would like to be able to give my team here even more because I can justify it now because hundreds, maybe thousands someday of people across the country can utilize these ideas and download these templates. Well, then you can justify putting even more time and money back in creating these products because it's not only going to be used by us guys here. Yeah. And, you know, we have agents that listen to this broadcast across the country. And I'm telling you right now, guys, if you're hearing this, um, she is the real deal. I mean, you don't go, people who know the real estate industry know that you don't go from 3.6 million to almost a hundred million dollars in three years. It just doesn't happen. So she is doing something special. So, you know, for those of you who are looking to take your real estate business to the next level, I would definitely take Tammy up and trying to plug into her tool systems and resources um, to help you take your business to the next level.
So yeah, that's what's so great is, you know, EXP allows you to go across state lines. You just find your expansion leader in another market, which is what I'm doing right now. I have a call with one right after this and another one tomorrow. And I'm working with some in New Jersey <coughs> as well as, as we speak. Um, but what, what you can do there is if they want to do their own thing and brand their own name, that's great. If they want to bring over a team under EXP, but still be able to access every template or any help and training that I can give in like a closed group situation, that's great too. If they want to literally use the absolute charm name, then there's a way that they can go over through licensing or other ways that we can take them that as well. And to me, all that does is really give me the ability to go even bigger with what I want to do for my, my ride or die team here that's in my building here in Texas. Yeah. And you, you know, you mentioned your ride or die team and I'm glad you said that because talk a little bit about, you know what EXP has meant to you and what problems it's solved for you. What problems has it solved for them? And how was that conversation? Well, you know, we're still fairly early on in the days here. Um, you know, June, probably August, you know, it's really just been, I think our first deal closed either in August or September under EXP. So okay. it's still been very recent and we're, we're getting all the kinks out and we just about, I think, have them all out. And the only reason there are any kinks is because we are a mega icon team, which is still a little bit of an unusual thing. You know, we're kind of the exception and not the rule. So we're getting that all figured out. Um, and I think what they're learning to what you hate at first and then you learn to love and appreciate is how you have so much transactional help. Meaning at first, you're like, oh, I got to get in scaffold and fix all these documents and I got to put on oh, why they make me do that. And then you realize. How great is it that they're making me do that? They're really telling me everything to do and that I'm yeah. missing initial on page six, which is exactly what we need. So they're starting to see that. Um, they're starting to get their groove and appreciate that help. That is way more help than I could give them. And frankly, those people are better at it. I may be an associate broker, but I'm good at selling stuff. Not so much the paperwork. Right. I told you I was copying people's papers. <laughs> We, we talked about that at the beginning. Remember when you would bring your paperwork back? And yeah, we listen, I did the same thing. We, I would bring paperwork back to my TC and she'd be like, you know, you forgot to put this in. You forgot to write this in. And I'm like, you know, I'm not I'm, I'm a salesperson. I'm not I'm not a paper paper pusher. You know what I mean? So I totally get that. So you, you're the dust is starting to settle for you guys now. And you guys are just full bore. Here's what I want to resonate with people who are contemplating change or are or, or, or curious is that you're not doing anything differently than you did when you were at your independent brokerage. You guys are still selling real estate, right? Yep. You just added in these, you've taken, you, you've leveraged some of the systems that EXP has, right? To take some of that off your plate. Yes. And then you've added in those two additional um, passive income streams, um, not only to yourself, but also to your team members, right? Absolutely. We've told everyone it is business. We told our clients it is business as usual here, except that we are going to be providing you a whole new level of service, networking, referral opportunities. Told the agents the same thing. It's business as usual, except we're giving you more than we ever gave you before. Um, and I do also love and, and almost all of them are participating in the stock program because it's like I've told them. I was like, you know, guys, I used to back in the day, I spent more time studying stocks and looking at all that. And one of the most important things you can do is dollar cost average. You don't have to be a, a SEC licensed person to know you don't want to go put all your eggs in one basket and buy stock all high. What if, you, what if that was the highest time of the market? They yeah. always, you know, even in the simplest little magazines, they say buy a little along. So you dollar cost average. Yes, you will have bought a few when it was high, but you lucked into a few when it was low. And over the course of time, it's a better deal overall. So that's what I like is at every closing we have chosen uh, my husband and I and most of our team to take advantage of the purchasing, take 5% of your commission. It goes into EXP stock at a 20% discount at what it was trading on the NASDAQ at that point. And, you know, and I said, this is way you got to look at it. Stock, stock. They could go up, they can go down, they can go to nothing. It is what it is. That's our disclaimer. But let's face it, is the world going to end if you lose that 5%? You know, if you look back, the odds of that happening, but if that, you know, you're, you're not going to go hungry, right? and you have put something away for the future. That's really overall where all this came down for me, both on the stocks as well as the revenue share, which I think is the most incredible plan I've ever seen to really incentivize us to build teams together and help one another. I had to say, I said, guys, everything's a risk. So I've got two risks. <clears throat> I have the risk of six months or a year from now going, man, I wish we hadn't done that. That was a bust. Well, 
Our signs look like they always did. We just got to take off that little thing at the bottom. Nobody really paid attention that much that anything had changed because it was business as usual in our marketing yeah. um, or the risk of looking back in two or three years and going, I could have been in on it then when they were building this fabulous company. I could have been up with Kyle and Mary, these people that I really wanted to to be mentored with and to, and to help mentor. And I had to decide which of these two risks, because you got you got both of them out there. Which one can you sleep at night with? And I finally said, you know what? The risk is far less th to do that than to sit back and go, man, what if what if I'd done it? Yeah. Yeah. And man, that is just so powerful. So, I, you know, for you, like it sounds like you've got obviously you've got this this great real estate business, and, but you understand you truly understand the value of, of building passive income too, that you, you, uh, you understand the extras and that may not be the only reason you move, but you understand the power of what it can offer you and your team, right? Well, what it can offer me and my team. And because it offers that to me and my team, it gives me some freedom and ability to offer back what I want to give back, which is, you know, life ain't free, right? You have to have things coming in to pay your bills. Well, so when I have that passive income that doesn't come off, this is what I love. It doesn't come off the agent's backs that are that are signed on under me. The agents that I sponsor into the company, the company pays me a portion of that. And so without making it harder for them to make a living, because I want them to succeed, the company is paying me basically to be able to provide more, more closed group coaching sessions, more of my templates, my downloads, everything, because I don't get paid if they don't sell real estate. So I'm definitely in the selling real estate game. There's no thing about signing up a bunch of people. If they're not succeeding, I'm not going to get a thing off of that. So I like that the practical results are married perfectly with the, the, uh, the behaviors they're trying to get you to map to. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so here's what I want to clarify for, especially for you brokers out there listening, because Tammy and Wes ran their own brokerage, right? And you did yes. not have to change anything other than the fact that you are now brokered by exp you kept all your branding you you Correct. i mean it, it is it is it is literally the best of both worlds and so for you guys it's just been like i mean when you heard about it you were probably like this is almost a no-brainer for us right i mean once you started doing your due diligence was there any reluctance at all to change other than the yes branding? yes there was a ton of reluctance <laughs> so tell me about that the reluctance was as you can probably tell, and I haven't even gotten into our tourist website, our in-house media team, all the other things we do in life, we got a lot on our plate. So I really didn't relish the opportunity to, to start down a whole new path and reinvent something that wasn't quite three years old yet. I really remember saying to, to Wes and to my daughter, I really wish this didn't even exist. It's, it, it meaning, meaning I wish I didn't have to deal with this because yeah. I don't got time, right? But what I finally realized is, Oh, whether I want it to exist or not, it does. So I'm going to have to look at it and make a decision and then weigh those two risks again. So once I started looking into it, I saw a tremendous upside. Yes, there were parts of me that would have liked to just stayed in a cruise control because so much going on all the time. But you can't bury your head in the sand when the opportunity is there. You got to do the hard thing because losers do the easy thing. Yep. You know, losers ride along and go, well, it's. I don't want to think about that. So I'm just going to ride this ship off the edge of the ocean. You know, yeah. you can't do that. When the handwriting's on the wall, you've got to do the tough thing, pull up your bootstraps and go, okay, if change is here, if these things do exist, I can't, I can't let the tail wag the dog. I got to be the dog, not the tail. So that's when we got really proactive, started digging, ran the model every way we could. Um, I talked to people up, up to, I talked to Jay Kinder. I of course talked to Kyle and Mary extensively. Then even when it was time to announce, we, I went out to the shareholder summit in Las Vegas. Cause I said, I'm not even going to, even though I've already committed, you know, mentally, I want to look these leaders in the eyeball. I want to see who these people are. I want to see the president. I want to hear him talk. I want to make sure that I am signing on with people of similar core values. And I love the way they talk. I love the way they embrace their core values. I said, okay, these are genuine folks. Um, there were a lot of really smart people up there speaking, a lot of women, a lot of women in the leadership of this company. Um, and I just felt the, the integrity. I said, I got to feel good about what I'm doing because I've got a lot of great people on my team and the, the burden of this, I get it guys, the burden of going, I don't want to mess this up. 
you know, because they're looking at me to get it right. I'm like mama right now and I got to make the right decision. And it kept coming back to the weighing of, OK, I like everything I'm hearing. I trust these folks. I'm going to take a risk of either having to scratch that back off my sign if I'm wrong or having missed the biggest shift in real estate that has come along in a very long time. Amen, sister. I love it. I love it. And this has been one of my favorite shows. Like you are just, your energy is infectious. You are a, a good human being. And like, I've, I've actually learned a lot by just sitting here listening to you that um, I can implement into my business, you know, when we, when we, when we go forward here, but you know, you know, as we wrap up here, I'm all, I always ask the same question. So, you know, we have a lot of listeners that are agents and a lot of listeners that are brokers and business owners. Right. And, and so I'm curious to you, what to those people that are, are exploring other opportunities, um, maybe even with EXP, um, what do you say to those people? You know, I say, weigh your risks, decide, you know, here's one of the things I'm looking to do. And I, I, this is what I love about EXP giving me the power to do it. I don't, and I've told a few independent agents who are kind of getting a start, but they're still fairly new and they're a little fearful. Maybe they don't have the backing yet. So I said, the beauty is I've talked to one person who's an independent agent in that way, but she's been on the team and she feels very comfortable feeling like she needs lead still. She's not right, quite ready to take the full leap of being a hundred percent on her own. The beauty is I have friends who own traditional teams in those areas and she has interviewed with both of them. And I've talked to them about it. They said, you can absolutely be her sponsor. So she gets you and they can physically be on our team until they, she feels ready to move out. Same thing with expansion leaders. These people I have in these other markets who are wanting to open up the absolute charm brand or even just their own name. That's great too. In another area. If I recruit someone out there, I'm going to try to sponsor that person in under an expansion leader because what I don't want because it doesn't work. You know, when you do crappy things and you don't do the right thing by people, it doesn't work, okay? Not only is it bad karma, it just doesn't work. Right. So I wanna put them under someone who physically is where they are and has a little incentive to bring them along and maybe meet up at Starbucks and have powwow brainstorm sessions. I wanna set them up for success and not have them floating alone out there going, you know, why did I do this? I want them to know, and some people, and let's face it, some are ready to hit the ground running and they don't need nothing, right? They've got the tools they need, but a lot of people still need a hand. So EXP gives you so many ways to structure it where you can set them up for success, whether on a traditional team or just sponsored in under someone else that you sponsor. I'd rather give up a little bit there and know that they have a better shot of being happy and fulfilled and succeeding where they are. Yeah, that's that's so good. So, Tammy, how can how can people connect with you, whether it's about growing their real estate business uh, or exploring their opportunity at EXP? How would you prefer people connect with you? Well, I have a business page, Tammy Pack, which will be a very good way to do it because I am getting really close to 5000 friends on my personal page. But until then, I'll keep adding. I got a few hundred left to go. And that's Tammy Jordan Pack. Uh, I kept it really simple in case you're uh, trying to remember where to find me. My website is TammyPack.com. So you can check that out. I've got blog articles. Uh, there's a lot more to be added there. Sometimes it's recipes. You never know what might be on there, but I tried to have a hub for a little bit of everything at TammyPack.com. Um, but yeah, I would love to connect. Also feel free to join, uh, like I say, request membership in our social media 2.0 for realtors. We're going to be adding great new templates and fun things in there. Ideas to grow your social media uh, marketing campaigns. Tammy, thank you so much. Like I said, this has been so much fun. You've delivered so much value. I so appreciate it. Um, I am, I am a humbled before you in your, uh, <laughs> in your three years going from $3.6 million to almost a hundred million. That is like mind blowing. And yeah. so, yeah, I, like I will definitely plug into anything that you're doing. Um, and, you know, if, if, if there's ever anything that we can do for you, you know, let us know. But let's definitely stay connected. All right. Yes. And I don't see it at the moment, but I was my cat has disappeared at the moment. But you can also follow Princess Coco Beans on Instagram. She has over 50,000 followers. So that's a lot of fun. <laughs> follow her cat. Princess that's Coco Beans. Too. There you go. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, Tammy, hey, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we will definitely stay connected, okay? Sounds great. Appreciate it. All righty. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. That was so good, man.